Here are some illegal words you should never use in a mathematical explanation. So this is super useful for when you're thinking about your Oxbridge interviews. And this isn't just for math students, this is for students who are doing a STEM-based subject where there will be math as part of the interview. And I think I'd even go so far as to say these skills aren't just mathematics, they're just good for explanation. My name's Jamie and I studied maths at the University of Oxford, went through the whole application process, so MAT interviews, also did the TMUA as well, got an offer, studied there for four years, and now I work full-time helping students across the globe secure Oxbridge offers. When I teach students, one thing I find when they begin to learn how to explain things is they're really, really bad at it. And there are three words that come up a lot, which I'm going to say are illegal, or you should make them illegal in your vocabulary when trying to explain a mathematical concept, or uh, how a function works, or just even give a proof. This, that, and it. So I'm going to repeat those again. This, that, and it. Those three words, this, that, it, you don't want to use. A lot of the time when a student tries to maybe first, you know, explain a theorem or explain something, as maybe explain just their working out, they might say uh, the function or this, this, this graph um, or this, this equation is zero. Like, and sometimes I'm, I'm watching them or listening to them going, well, which equation are you talking about? You've got four written on the screen or you've got four uh, on, the, on the piece of paper. Which one are you talking about? And so if you say this, it's not very clear. So how can you improve that? Well, maybe what you could do is circle the equation you're referring to. So if you, this works maybe a bit better if you're on an electronic whiteboard where you can circle it and then just undo the circle later on so it's not really affecting the writing. Uh, or you could literally give the equation a name. So give the equation star or cross or something. So instead of saying the equation or this equation, so maybe the is an, another illegal word uh, in, in certain contexts. You don't want to say, oh, the equation. Which equation are you talking about? Um, so maybe just give it a name. So call it star or something. Or just quote the equation. So if the equation is 3x plus 5 equals 0, then just say, oh, well, the equation 3x plus 5 equals 0 has one real root. Uh, or you, instead of saying, oh, the, the equation has one real root. Um, that being said, like you don't have to make it super tedious. If it is the case that you are just talking, there is only one equation, there's no lev room for ambiguity, then yeah, sure, call it the equation. But if there's multiple equations, if there's any room for ambiguity, make it super clear and this kind of falls under this broader umbrella bracket of kind of you want to make yourself as clear as possible and I'm going to talk about that now in a bit more depth. Before I do, uh, as I say I studied maths at university at Oxford and now I help students who are looking to secure Oxbridge offers. Over 80% of the students I work with end up securing Oxbridge offers so if that is something you are at all interested in, if you're working already kind of okay at school maths or actually doing really well at school maths but struggling to bridge uh, into the Oxbridge system do get in touch, link in the description below. Anyway, how can you make yourself more clear? How can you avoid ambiguity in what you're talking about and making yourself, well, just a better communicator? Well, firstly, it's ditching those illegal words, but also kind of putting yourself in the shoes of the person that you're talking to. So firstly, knowing your audience is really, really important. If I'm explaining a mathematical concept, it would be very diff different if I'm explaining it to someone who has a PhD in mathematics, to someone who's just about getting to grips with A-level maths. You've got to know your audience. So in an interview, when you're doing an Oxbridge interview, you are obviously explaining mathematical concepts, if you're do applying for maths, let's say, to people who are a million times smarter than you, who know a million times more maths than you do, who are better than you at maths in every single way. Even though they might be humble and not say that, these professors are ridiculously smart. Don't, you know, don't let their humility um, disguise that. They are really, really smart. So when you are explaining mathematical concept, you don't have to prove, for example, in uh, things in, in a lot of these, or explain like basic concepts in a lot of these. And this is a difficult skill to master, to kind of know what information to filter out in your explanations and what to keep in. Um, but essentially the idea is that the, things that are boring and, or what we in maths call trivial, um, so trivial just means things which are normally um, easy enough to leave for the reader to do as an exercise. Um, so things like uh, rearranging an equation. If I'm solving an equation as part of a maths interview and I have to rearrange things and I know I can do it in my head, I don't have to go step by step and walk it through. Um, I could just say something like, okay cool, we have this equation, if I just quickly rearrange it I get x equals 4.2 whatever. Cool. The interviewers know you can do that pretty well and you know that they can do that fine. 
cool. It's not something that they're really too interested in. Obviously, if you have to go through a few more steps to kind of get to that, fine, no big deal. But if I'm gonna make a massive jump from here to here, and so if I have a, fifth, a formula, and then I say, cool, this has no real solutions, without giving any added justification or any reason or any kind of any kind of inkling as to why that should be the case, that's pretty poor. So even though the interviews know why that equation has no solutions, that you know they designed the question, you want to think, well, okay, cool. How how am I supposed to explain this again with kind of avoiding? Let me just close this, uh, without kind of going into too much depth of, um, okay, yeah, this this formula means this line is true by adding three on both sides because it's really really obvious. Um, so really, really cherry picking the, the best ways to describe an argument. Now, how can you practice this? A really good way to start off at least is go through your A-level syllabus, pick up or take all the theorems that there are, all the theorems, all the formulae, all the equations, all that sort of stuff, make a list of them. Um, and firstly, basic checklist, make sure you have them memorized. That is the first thing. Second thing, make sure you know the proofs of each of them inside out and you, can be able, you should be able to do that on demand. So if anyone says, oh, can you prove the quadratic formula for me, great. Can you prove the sine rule for me? Great, you can do that on site, on demand. No, no room for ambiguity left on the table. So that's the second thing. Third thing is then think about an explanation for, for each of those. So how could you explain a proof? And so that what I mean by that is imagine you weren't given pen and paper and you had to kind of prove why Pythagoras' theorem is true. So obviously you, it's very difficult to verbalize a proof of, for Pythagoras' theorem in, a, in the same amount of rigor as you could with pen and paper. So I'm not asking you to do it rigorously. What I want you to do is get, uh, is essentially explain that proof, how it works, to someone who is maybe good at A-level math. So that's your target audience. And you want to say how, how, how one would outline a proof. So if, if I was to, let's say, take Bob, who's doing A-level math, they're very good at it, and they were curious about the proof of, for, uh, of I was going to say Fermat's last theorem, <laughs> uh, uh, of Pythagoras' theorem. Um, if they're curious about it, how could I explain to them? i say, cool, well, what you want to do is think about a square. Uh, so, sorry, let's start with the what is Pythagoras' theorem. Let you have a right angle triangle with side length A, B, and C, C is the hypotenuse, and then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And to give you a rough idea of a proof, we're going to take a square with side length a plus b. And if you dissect or you know split this shape up, this square up into some smaller shapes, so it's going to be four congruent triangles and one square, um, you can consider areas and then from that derive that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so I've just explained that to Bob. Of course, maybe I, there were some bits where I could have maybe pieced together the dots a little bit. Um, but essentially, you're not giving them a full, right, here's what you do, here's a picture, here's, here's the lines, here's the triangles, here's the calculations. You're not doing that. You're leaving that to, the, to them. You're just kind of painting the dots, and then they've got to go away and connect the dots. And so in terms of what you can do to practice is with these theorems and formulas that you now memorize and you know the proofs of, try and think of various lengths like depths of explanation. So that was maybe 20 seconds, me explaining uh, Pythagoras' theorem. To be honest, Pythagoras' theorem, the proof of it doesn't require much longer than that, apart from doing the actual calculation. Um, but think about maybe a slightly more, um, slightly more involved concept or idea. So for example, the binomial theorem. Um, that's something where, to really understand why the binomial theorem works, you really need to understand, well, where do these n choose k terms come from? So obviously make sure you understand where those come from, but then think about an explanation and maybe think about two or three different lengths of explanation. So one which is a 20 second explanation, one which is a minute long explanation, and one which is maybe a three or four minute explanation. And if you do this, you're going to get good at A, learning how best to deliver a mathematical argument to a target audience. Um, and B, also, under, well, it's going to force you to understand these theorems really well, which is what you need going into the interviews. Um, but C, thirdly, is I think you'll begin to really appreciate the, the idea, the concept of putting yourself in someone else's shoes when delivering a mathematical explanation. And that's crucial to, to becoming a great mathematician. Um, broadly speaking, most proofs in maths can be done by contradiction. And the way that I always think about proof by contradiction, and I heavily think, I highly recommend you do too, too is if you're trying to prove a statement in maths 
and you want to do so by contradiction, the way you're doing it is you're imagining some, you know, let, let's say, root, let's think about root two being irrational. I'm trying to prove that root two is irrational. The way I, I'm going to do that is I'm imagining I'm in like a, <laughs> this is a bit of a weird analogy, but I'm in like a battle on a street and someone's come up to me and said, hey, root two is rational. What you want about Jamin? It's not irrational. And I go, okay, cool. Let's imagine you are correct. So I'm putting myself in their shoes. Let's imagine you are correct. Then root two, we can write as A over B and blah, blah, blah. You know the proof for root two being irrational. And the idea is you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes. You're thinking about their experience. And these are difficult skills to kind of juggle at the same time of actually verbalizing and talking a proof. Obviously in an interview as well, you're going to be writing and drawing things. And this isn't here to scare you, but this is just here to kind of actually aspire you. You're probably already quite good at proof writing. But to help you stand out in interviews, you want to be good at proof writing and speaking at the same time. But also putting yourself in, in an interview in an interview shoes where obviously they're quite good at like math and they you know they're not expecting you to kind of go through the basics um, going through calculations, but they expect you to be able to explain things in enough depth, getting a good kind of balance of depth without over explaining. Um, and this is a skill, it's not easy to master, and it, do, it is something that takes time. Um, so if you haven't started practicing for interviews and preparing for interviews now, don't leave it till October, till after the MAT and the TMUA, like most people do. Loads of people wait till November till they get an offer for interviews, then start preparing. That is so silly. Start preparing today and integrate that into your TMUA and MAT preparation. So take an MAT problem that you've done, whether you've got it right or not, let's say you have got it right, explain the solution. Think about various levels of explanations of the solution. How would you explain the, the, so from the problem, how could you explain to someone how to approach the problem if they were struggling? What things could they consider? What things should they try? What things should they do? And so that they leave that problem going, you know what, not only have I managed to solve that problem, but now I actually understand why this problem works. That's in fact what I try and do in my YouTube videos. So when I solve a math problem, I try and leave the viewer thinking, okay, cool, not only do I know how to solve that very specific problem, I also know now how to deal with other problems that, you know, if I see a certain word in that question, I know to look out for it and those sorts of things. Cool. So a bit of me waffling on, um, but basically you need to get better at explaining things if you want to pass the Oxbridge math interview. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I'm running a TMUA masterclass series. There are still a few spots left, so I'll leave a link in the description below uh, where I kind of give you a little bit of information on that, but just DM me TMUA on Instagram or an e send me an email, inquiries at jpymathstutoring.com if that's something you want to enroll in. It's only for students who are aiming for a grade nine, so if that's not you, that's fine, but if you're aiming for a grade nine and struggling to get there, get in touch today.